This recipe was a little bit of an experiment and I'm sure further down the line I might do a review video where I might adapt it slightly, but this is what I've come up with so far. This particular time I'm actually using dried yeast rather than the normal fresh yeast that I use. This is purely because on previous experiences with making donuts, the dried yeast does seem to work slightly better. The first stage in the process will be to activate the dried yeast. We're going to do this in a process known as blooming by adding the yeast to our liquid and allowing it to begin to ferment. In order for this to happen, the liquid that we use in whatever recipe that's using the yeast needs to be at a temperature of roughly 38 degrees Celsius. This is to allow the yeast to actually become active and actually start producing carbon dioxide, which is what actually causes your bake to rise. I heated up the beetroot juice by giving it 20 seconds in the microwave just to bring it up to the temperature here, which was slightly under 38 degrees or about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I then added the yeast in and stirred it in well to bloom it and then once this happens the yeast will start to feed on the sugar in the beetroot juice which is what will make it start to produce alcohol and carbon dioxide which will make our bake rise. Once your yeast is fully dissolved into your beetroot mix set it aside for 10 minutes to allow the yeast to start working. While the yeast mixture is blooming, place 200 grams of bread flour, a pinch of salt and 10 grams of caster sugar into your mixing bowl ready to go onto the mixer. I've reduced the sugar content here due to the fact we do have some naturally occurring sugars in the beetroot juice and that will be sufficient to feed the yeast. Place the bowl onto the mixer with the dough hook attachment and then place the mixer on the lowest setting just to allow the ingredients to start combining. If you don't have a stand mixer, that's not a problem at all, you can always mix this by hand. Once your yeast mixture has had its 10 minutes to bloom, just check that the yeast is good to use. This will be by seeing a foam form on top of it. When it is, add the beetroot juice to your flour mixture and then allow it to work in still on the lowest speed until it's all combined. As you can see here in this video, my dough was still quite wet even once all the dough had been combined. Should this be the case, simply switch off the mixer and add in a couple of tablespoons of flour at a time until a nice, soft but not sticky dough is formed. Once your dough has formed, allow it to knead for at least 10 minutes. This is to allow the glutens to build up and produce a nice, spongy, soft dough. Don't forget again, you don't need a mixer for this process, it just makes it more convenient. You can always make this recipe entirely by hand. While that's working away, let me take this opportunity to tell you about a great thing called Buy Me A Coffee. Buy Me A Coffee is a great donation site where you can really help out this channel by donating the equivalent of the price of a cup of coffee. Not only will your donation help out this channel in future videos, you'll also have the opportunity to leave a message where you could even suggest ideas for the next video. If you would like to support the channel, there's a link in the description. Your donations would be greatly appreciated. Once your dough has been kneaded for 10 minutes, remove it from the mixer, place it into a bowl and then cover with cling film and allow it to prove until doubled in size. You'll see here, normally I would leave it covered, but because of the heat generated by the yeast fermenting, it actually caused the cling film to cloud up, so for the last few minutes I just removed the cling film so you can actually see the donut rising. Once your dough has doubled in size, remove it from the bowl, turn it out onto your surface, give it a very light knead, and then divide it into 12 equal portions. Once it's into 12 equal portions, use the palm of your hands to just gently tease the dough into a nice round donut shape. Don't forget to see all sorts of cooking and baking and never miss a future upload. Hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell. I've just slowed down the time lapse briefly here just to show you the sort of hand shape you should be using to mold your donuts. You want to sort of cup the dough in your hand and put a very light pressure just to hold it there while you roll it but you don't want to put any downwards pressure as this will squeeze out any of the air that is already in your dough. Once your donuts have been moulded into shape, transfer them to a baking sheet in order to let them rise again. You'll see here the baking sheet, I've just given it a light coating with coconut oil. This is just to prevent the dough from sticking to the tray. 
and also once the donuts are on the tray I've just given them all a slight little tweak just to make sure that they're not stuck and there is a nice coating of oil underneath as this will make it much easier to get them off the tray when it comes time to cook. Allow your donuts to prove again until they have doubled in size. Once the donuts have doubled in size it's time to take them over to the stove to cook them but before we do start the cooking process there's a few steps we need to do now in order to be prepared when we cook them as once the cooking process starts you do need to be quite quick. The first thing we need to do is take another baking tray and give it a generous coating with kitchen paper. This is to place our donuts on in order to drain them once they have been fried. Next place a pan on the stove and add in 500 millilitres of vegetable or sunflower oil and begin to heat up. You could cook your donuts in the fryer, however I don't recommend this because of a combination of the sugars in the dough will cause the oil to spoil and also vice versa, anything that has previously been cooked in the fryer could also taint the taste of your donuts. Something as a good example could be something such as onions. Once your oil has been heated to somewhere in the region of 160 to 170 degrees Celsius, it's now time to start frying the donuts. Place them in gently one by one, being very careful not to catch any of the oil on yourself as this can cause severe burns. You'll see here that the oil at the start was ever so slightly above 170 degrees. The difference in temperature between the oil and the donut will bring this back in the range of 160 to 170 as soon as we start frying. As your donuts begin to fry you will see them expand slightly more again as the yeast will remain active until there's enough heat to kill the yeast off. You will see as they begin to cook the oil will start to bubble around the edges. You do need to keep turning them periodically to make sure that they're cooked evenly on both sides and in total you want around 4 minutes to cook the donuts. Once your donuts have been cooked, use a suitable utensil to remove them from the oil and then place onto your tray with the paper to allow the excess oil to drain off. And then repeat the cooking process as many times as is necessary with the amount of donuts that you have made. As you can see, as we're cooking the donuts, we do need to keep them moving in the pan to make sure that they don't stick together and also as they're cooking try not to overcook them they will change color slightly as you cook them but we want to try here not to burn them and another thing you need to check constantly while cooking them is the temperature of your oil to make sure it stays within the range we need to cook them properly it will go up and down but obviously as long as we stay within that 160 to 170 range they will work out okay once you have finished cooking all your donuts, it's extremely important to turn the heat off and let the oil in the pan cool down to room temperature completely before you try to move it or do anything else with it. With my oil here, what I do is put it in a separate container to keep for making future donuts, as the oil will now be tainted with things like sugar, so it's not really suitable for anything else other than sweet baking. The next step once you have cooked all your donuts is to now roll them in sugar to give them a nice sugar coating on the outside. You want to do this while they're still slightly warm as you want the heat from the donuts to help the sugar stick to the donut. And then after we've done that you want to place them onto a cooling rack to allow the air to circulate underneath. If you were to leave them on the tray the bottom of the donut would then sweat against the tray and it would lead to a soggy bottom donut. Now we come to the chocolate centre of our donuts. I did try different things when I was experimenting with this recipe but in the end I decided to use a chocolate syrup that is suitable for vegans. If you go down this route just make sure that whatever syrup you do decide is labelled as suitable for vegans. This one here is made by a coffee company called Beanies. It's originally intended to go inside a coffee although this has worked perfectly well on this one. I then took a syringe and then filled the syringe with the syrup and then injected 10 millilitres into the centre of each donut. Once you have injected the syrup into your donuts, just leave them with the hole facing up in order to let the syrup soak in and then it comes for the best part which is time to serve. As you can see now we have a lovely chocolate centre to our beetroot donut and they're now ready to be served. One thing I will add as a footnote was in the first couple of hours after they cooked they were a little bit on the chewy side, however once they'd had a few hours to chill down completely they were much more pleasurable to eat. 